Today I'm going to show you how to make the cutest animal paw stocking. These come in a mini size, a regular traditional size, and a jumbo size stocking pattern. The link below in the description box will take you to these pattern pieces that you can print off at home. And if you're watching from our website, alohasewingcompany.com, welcome and sew along. The first thing that you're going to do is go ahead and print out those pattern pieces and cut them out. I've already got my main stocking pattern piece cut out. I placed it on top of two pieces of fabric and then I cut that fabric out all at one time. This is the main piece and here are the two that I cut out. The other three pattern pieces are for the stocking cuff and the paws. When you see cut on fold, it means to fold your fabric and then you're going to place the pattern piece on the fold of your fabric and then trace around that before you cut it out. I am using a cotton fabric for my main fabric of the stocking and then for my cuff and my paw, I am using a fleece fabric because it doesn't fray and I can sew those paw pieces right on top of my main fabric without worrying about it. Go ahead and trace all of your pattern pieces. You need one of that heart-shaped one and four of the ovals for that paw at the bottom of your stocking. You can see here I am cutting out my stocking cuff piece and once I have it cut out with it still folded, when I unfold it, it creates a longer piece. But keep that piece folded with the right sides together. Then I'm going to cut out one of these heart-shaped paw pieces and I'm going to cut out four small squares of fabric, stack them on top of each other, and cut out my oval paw pieces all at one time. If your cut is not perfect, that's okay. Just go around and trim it with your scissors as you need to, to round those corners out. And again, we need four of these pieces and here's how I like to do mine. Now we are ready to go ahead and place these pieces on top of our stocking front piece. I'm just using a cotton fabric for the main fabric and again I'm using fleece, flannel would also work, or any fabric uh, that won't fray. Get your pattern piece and poke some holes right in the middle of each of those five dots on top of your pattern. I'm using an awl to do that. You can also use your scissors, a fork, whatever you have on hand. Place that pattern piece right on top of the front of your stocking with the pretty side of the fabric facing up and go ahead and mark through those holes so that the holes appear on your fabric in those places. The next thing we're going to do is fold our little heart shaped paw piece right in half so that way when we open it we will have a center crease. Now place the middle of that right in the middle of where that top marking is on your front of your stocking. Then you're gonna do the same thing with all four of the little oval paw pieces and making sure that the direction of each of those paw pieces is going towards the middle of your paw heart. There are several different options on how you can attach these pieces to the front of your stocking. I'm going to sew them on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and I'm going to use a very short small stitch and make sure I sew very slowly around all of those curves. Anytime my fabric won't move with the curve while I'm sewing, I lift my presser foot, adjust my fabric in the direction it needs to go, put the presser foot back down, and then continue sewing. When you do lift that presser foot, make sure your needle is inside your fabric so that your fabric and thread doesn't move. You can also use one-sided fusible fleece and iron these in place, or you can just use fabric glue. The biggest thing is to use a fabric that doesn't fr fray like fleece or flannel. Here is mine using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and sewing slowly around each one of these pieces. And now we are going to connect the front and back piece to make our stocking. Get both pieces and lay them with the right sides together. And then you're going to pin or clip around the entire stocking, except do not pin or clip across the top so that you remember not to sew that area closed. 
use about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and make sure every time you get to those curves that you're sewing slowly and at each paw corner put your needle inside your fabric lift the presser foot and then rotate your fabric to go around the next curve and put your presser foot back down to sew it you do this so that you get nice crisp curves down there at the bottom and again I'm going to stop here rotate my fabric with the needle still in the fabric by lifting my presser foot and rotating the fabric how I need to continue sewing and do the same thing at each point down here at the bottom of these curves again do not sew across the top and here's what it looks like when I've finish sewing this all together. I used a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And the first thing you wanna to remember to do anytime you are sewing curves like this is to go to each point and clip a small slit all the way up to your stitches, but not clipping through your stitches, just getting right close to them. And you do this so that when you flip this right side out in just a few minutes, your curves won't pucker up and they'll lay nice and flat. Then you wanna go back around each of your curves and just clip some notches around your curves. Again, that's gonna help that fabric to, to curve nicely, especially when you're not using a stretch fabric like I'm not, because I'm using cotton. Just for a more professional look and to give your seams a professional close, you can zigzag using a very narrow stitch all the way across the entire stocking, or you can serge it. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it just gives it a nice finished seam. Now through the whole opening in the top, let's go ahead and flip this stocking right side out. Make sure that you smoothen out all of your seams so that they lay nice and flat. And I even like to use a chopstick and go in there and press out all of my seams, especially down the, there at those curves. Now you're going to take this to your iron and iron this flat. If you use fleece or flannel on the front, make sure you flip this over first. You don't wanna iron right on top of that. So flip it over, get all your wrinkles out, make sure all your seams are pressed nice and flat, and then we're going to work on creating the cuff. So grab your folded cuff piece. The right sides should be on the inside folded together so that they're kissing. Line up those raw edges on the side and using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, go ahead and sew those raw edges together all the way down the side. This is the wrong side of my fabric. You can see I've sewn the line down the side now and we're going to turn this right side up only halfway though. Meet the raw edges together right there at the seam that you just created. Open your seams up so they lay nice and flat and don't bulk up. And then you're gonna clip or pin those two side seams together so that the raw edges are on the top. And another important thing to note is if you're using a directional fabric that has a print on it, you want your print to be laying the way it should right now. So if you're looking at it, it should be the right direction from top to bottom on your cuff with the raw edges at the top. Now we wanna make a guide for the front and back of our cuff. The back is that piece that you just clipped together where the seam is. That's the center of the back. To get the center of the front, you're gonna put a clip right adjacent to that and then flip it so that your pins or clips are kissing and it will give you the left and the right side of that cuff that you're also going to clip or pin. This quarters out your stocking cuff so that when you place it inside of your stocking, like we're going to do now, it will all line up evenly with the center of the back of this cuff with the center back of this stocking piece. Just a reminder one more time, if you're using a print fabric that has direction, make sure it's right side out with the edges on the top and when you're looking at it, the print is facing the correct direction right now. With the seam on this cuff as your center back piece, go ahead and place your cuff right inside of your stocking. You're going to line up the side seam of your stocking with that side pin or clip of your cuff and then do the same thing for the other side. 
Then you're going to adjust your pins or clips for the front and the back of your stocking and clip those together and add a few more pins or clips if you feel like you need to. Now we're gonna work on making our hanging loop for the stocking. Get your hanging loop pattern piece and cut out your fabric using that pattern piece. Fold it with the right sides together and sew a line along the long side of your strip using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is gonna create a little tube. You can't see it very well, but I sewed using a 3 8 inch seam allowance right there across the right side where the raw edges are and it has an opening at the top and an opening at the bottom. The next thing you're gonna do is grab a safety pin. It doesn't matter what size, but the bigger ones do work better. Open it up and at the top or bottom of your tube where the fold of the fabric is, place your safety pin right inside that fold about a quarter of an inch down. And then you're going to push your safety pin into your tube and cinch it all the way down and pull your fabric over that safety pin as you go, and this is gonna flip it right side out. Now go ahead and take your safety pin out of your fabric and go ahead and smoothen out the seams of this hanging loop. I like to use my chopstick in everyday sewing, so I have that on hand. You can also use a pin. So go ahead and flatten those out, and then with the seam, in the middle, go ahead and flatten this into a flat strap. There's the seam, you can't see it very well because of my fabric, but you can see it's right in the middle here facing me and I've gotten it flattened. I'm gonna press this with my iron and then just fold it in half with the seam pieces kissing. Now let's place our hanging loop inside of our stocking. To do that, I wanna put it so that it hangs on the right side of my stocking. Here's the front and here's the back of the stocking. I want it on the right side with the raw edges facing up and the fold facing down. I'm going to find my right side seam and I'm gonna sandwich this hanging loop with the fold going down right in between the layers of fabric between my cuff and my main stocking back piece. Again, the fold is down and these raw edges should be at the top. And I'm gonna place it right up against my right side seam. If you don't want it to be hanging from the back, you can also put it right there in the middle of that side seam if you'd rather. But I like to do it this way and I leave a little bit of that hanging loop right above the fabric to make sure that I catch it when I'm sewing. Now you're going to take this to your sewing machine. You can remove the attachment on the bed of your sewing machine and slide this right on if you're using the traditional or the jumbo size. And sew using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around your stocking. And here's what it looks like. You can finish those edges with your serger or a very narrow zigzag stitch if you want to, but that's all that we have to do as far as sewing. Pull your cuff up out of the stocking and then you're going to fold it over downwards. The hanging loop will be right there in the back, sandwiched right in between those layers with a nice closed hidden seam there. This stocking is absolutely adorable. It works for any animal pet lover. And I've also made these and donated them to animal shelters during the holidays. So if you are looking for a sew for charity project, this is a great one.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have fun sewing along with me. Please, please, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see all of our easy sewing patterns as they're released. Visit alohasewingcompany.com or the link is down below in the description box on YouTube to see all of our super easy sewing patterns that you can print at home so you can start to sew faster. We make sewing patterns for literally everything from baby items, kids clothes, decorations, holiday stuff and gifts, bags and more. And before you go, mahalo.